Hello and welcome back to Kamen Rider Review, Rider fans in the new audiolog format, no more video clips, but that won't stop me. In case you don't watch Super Sentai Time as well, here's a quick roundabout of the new format. The videos are now split in parts, we're going to start all episodes with a short recap of interesting tidbits from the past, then comes the actual review slash synthesis of the episode, and finally my personal conclusions, everything decorated by yours truly. Hope you're ready, let's start with the recap! We haven't seen neither Jonouchi nor Oren in a while, eh? We last time we saw the two, they were still trying to sling mud at the beat riders like a pair of fruity frosted monkeys. They both saw plenty of use in the earlier parts of the show, Oren as a serious threat and Jonouchi as a comedic relief, but ever since the Christmas episode they've been seeing less and less screen time and use. Now, it appears that this episode is to be centered around the two of them, and we have two important pieces of information to go with that. First, the production apparently loves the character of Jonouchi, and they have big plans for him. And second, according to the actor playing Pierre Alfonso, this is the last episode where Bravo will make his appearance, so we can all guess what's going to happen in this. All that's left to know is to see how and if Jonouchi will get all Batman on us as a result. On to the episode! From the last episode's forest-centric battle, so we now go back to Zawame City, where the invests are once again wrecking havoc and attacking people, in a much greater number than usual, but Knuckle and Gaim are on the job! After Michan joins the fray, they're able to quickly dispatch them with a triple finish, and most of the crowd is finally turning around their opinion of them, much to Jonochi's jealousy, which is probably only loneliness. Now that the teams and the rankings are gone, since he started with Oren, he was left completely out of the loop, but it's not like his teammates had a good opinion of him even when they were a team. Oren notices his depressive state of mind, not that he couldn't, with Jonouchi kneeling in a corner and whimpering like a puppy, but Oren sees this as Jonouchi's first step to true manliness. You've got to realize that you're a little bitch to do something about it, and he decides that it's training time! In the meanwhile, Kota has gone back to Helheim to look for the Overlords, but he only finds a Kaito who proceeds to tell Kota something like uh, You seriously think the Overlords are going to save humanity just because you ask them? Bitch, please! Kota has to grudgingly admit that maybe the Overlords aren't that much into diplomacy, since they didn't even bother to listen to him. But Kaito provides him with an alternative. We get stronger than them and then we make them our bitches! Back to Yggdrasil, the Circle of Evil is desperately trying to find out who Sagara really is and where he disappeared to without a result. Which means that of course Sagara is waiting for them back at the lab, sporting some fancy new threads. Sagara explains that he's just an outside observer, and since Kota was unfairly stacked against Yggdrasil, he decided to help him. Also, he reveals that he's on Toriyoma's little scheme. Project Tark is just a facade, a veil to let him safely move Yggdrasil's resources for something else. Ryoma hypothesizes that Helheim has actually come into contact with Earth many times before he even recorded the history, and it's also the source of the various myths of humanity regarding a forbidden fruit. He believes that Helheim is not only the winner of the most scary invading alien species award, it's also the holder of a real forbidden fruit, able to grant the one who grabs it with unlimited power, and Sagara confirms this as truth. Helheim gives, Helheim taketh away. By forcing the inhabitants of the worlds which it invades to fight for survival, it sets into motion a Darwinist's wet dream. The one who ends up on top and manages to survive will get unlimited power for its troubles. And before disappearing, without revealing how the hell he is a walking Helheim encyclopedia, he drops another bomb. The fruit exists and it's in the hands of the Overlords. And then we cut to the playground version of Full Metal Jacket. And I'm using that sentence literally. It's all violence, sparkles, and frolicking and freaking landmines? Seriously? I mean, I mean, I guess it speaks volumes about our rider's durability, but Oren actually planted landmines in a playground! 
like that wasn't bad enough, what follows is the beauty training, and god help me, Jonouchi actually makes for a convincing woman in the dark, and the less said about the morning the better, for the sake of my sanity! But Oren didn't put up a cross sign on the door while they were doing all that, which is the straw that breaks the acorns back. After breaking down, admitting that he's a sneak and someone who doesn't even know what he wants to do with his life, unlike Oren, he runs away, still dressed like that. That's how Kota finds him at Bandos, depressed and in drag. The two have a conversation, during which Kota confesses that he's not that different from Jonouchi, he doesn't really know what he should do either, and he's pretty much alone in his worries. After this disturbing image, seriously what the fuck, which even Oren gets bothered by, he attacks Kota, thinking that he's leading Jonouchi astray while he's trying to become a real man, and then we get another disturbing image and another, until someone decides to stop this bullshit. Bartender girl! But of course, the focus can't be on her that much, and the fight moves outside, continuing to be silly. If before they exploded balloons, now they fall down flights of stairs, hold onto their butts, and eventually get completely tired out. Why Kota didn't just use a more powerful transformation is beyond me. And of course, that's the moment when Inves attack, and not just any Inves, but a small platoon of the more powerful ones. All the while, the episode tries to hammer it in that Oren isn't an opportunist, he's just a fool who really believed that Beat Riders were behind everything. Again, why Kota doesn't just use the triumphant arms or any of the other more powerful transformations is beyond me, but it's the perfect setup for Jonouchi to man up and join the fray, protecting Kota and Oren from an onslaught before passing out. Only then does Kota finally use the triumphant arms and dispatches all of the invests in literally 15 seconds. That was so stupid. Well, at least we got a cool pose out of it, but when it turns around, Oren and Jonouchi have disappeared. What follows is a scene against the sunset, with Oren praising Jonouchi for his bravery, even if it was a bit stupid, and then Jonouchi convinces him that the beat riders aren't behind the invest. Just like that. After that, we get two more scenes, Kota being found by Mai, who has noticed that he's avoiding her and wants to talk to him, and Oren who finds a crack. He jumps into it and then screams, and according to the interview, this is the last we're seeing of him. God damn it, I thought we were done with the bad episodes, guy! Why did you let me down like this? It's awful! I mean, okay, the humor was good, and seeing the bartender girl kick ass and still look cute while doing it was awesome. But, is this seriously how you're going to get rid of Oren? He jumps in a crack, screams, and that's it? Seriously? You had the perfect setup for making him go out in a blaze of glory, maybe protecting Jonouchi and leaving him an important lesson in life. Instead, you went with this bullshit. Like it's bullshit, the fact that Oren was just a misguided fool because we never got that impression of him until now. All that we've seen of him pointed to Oren being a smart opportunist who always thinks of himself first. The relations about Helheim and the Overlords were nice and the humor was good, except for a few disturbing parts, but it seems like everything else was added as an after two. Like, uh, uh, dudes, we're supposed to get rid of Oren in this episode, and they came up with something in five minutes. I guess this means that now we're going to see more of John Uchi again, but they could have made his re-entering the ranks of the Armored Riders a lot more meaningful. Instead, they went with this. Well, that's it for this week, rather fans. Hope you like the new format and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my new channel. Janet!